let's be real. Houses are some of the best long-term investments you can ever get into. It's a home, a source of income, and a great way to get the people you love under one roof. If you're thinking about getting into some extra income, then houses are the best way to go. I mean, just in the last two years, it seemed like house prices could never fall. They kept rising like there was no tomorrow. We just recently saw one of the most significant rises in house prices in the history of the market. Imagine an asset that rises in value by 1 or 2 percent, suddenly rising by over 20 percent. Welcome to Modern Wealth, where today I'll be talking about mortgages and the current state of house prices. If you're interested in this sort of thing, we made another video about the housing market potentially crashing this 2022. Make sure to check that video out. With that being said, whoever got a mortgage in 2020 made one of the best decisions of his or her life. And if you were one of those lucky people, not only did the price of your house appreciate drastically, but you also fixed your mortgage rate at a historically low rate. Buying a house through a low mortgage rate is probably one of the best ways to build wealth. You're going to pay for rent anyways, so why not pay for the mortgage and generate wealth over time? Even if you aren't going to live there, if the mortgage rate is low enough, renting it out will not only cover the mortgage payments, but also generate some income. Unfortunately, that has changed in the last couple of months. As the Fed is tackling inflation, house prices are beginning to shape. You can no longer get a 3% mortgage rate. When it comes to mortgage rates, a single percentage point already makes a huge difference, let alone 2 or 3%. In fact, the average down payment in the US is just 6%. A half million dollar house, including taxes and fees at 3%, would equal around $2,979. If we take the exact same house but with a 6% mortgage rate, the price would shoot up to $3,824. The difference is remarkable, especially if you are planning to rent it out and turn it into a source of income. But that's just one part of the story because the other is that house prices are declining really fast. Experts were warning all of us, even back then, that this is not sustainable and house prices one way or another should collapse. It was turning into a bubble that would eventually burst. Honestly though, it's both good news and bad news depending on whom you are asking. If you're a homeowner, you want to keep watching how the price of your house keeps rising. But if you're a home buyer, you can actually consider buying a house since you don't have to bet and overpay for your house. So let's find out. Will house prices keep declining? Will the market completely collapse by the end of the year? Or is it the right time to buy a house or not? We will answer all of these questions and many more. But before we do that, make sure to like and subscribe. That will definitely help this channel out and let us know that you like the content that we make. We'll continue to make more informed financial videos like this. Now, back to the video. So let's first look at what happened. Long story short, when the pandemic hit the world, the Fed was so worried that the economy would collapse that it instantly lowered the rates to literally 0%, especially after March stock market crash. Low interest rates led to low mortgage rates, which pushed demand to increase. At the same time, the pandemic slowed down supply chains, which created a shortage of materials in the market and decreased the supply of houses in the market. On top of this entire mess, people were worried to sell their houses since the future seemed unpredictable. This whole charade further lowered the supply. And what happens in a market where there is so much demand but so little supply? Prices shoot through the roof. It seemed like a bubble in the beginning, and it still is to a certain extent but there is always a ceiling to how high prices can rise. Now, let's ask a different question. What happens when mortgage rates rise? Not only will that slow down the demand, but also push banks to approve smaller mortgages. So let's go back to the example we talked about in the beginning. If the bank would approve you a $3,000 monthly payment on your income, at 3%, you could have got a half a million dollar house. But now, at 6%, you no longer can afford half a million dollars because at a 6% mortgage rate, you have to make enough money to be able to make a $3,800 monthly payment, which again, 
lowers the demand, and eventually leads to prices declining. But not everything is so crystal clear. How would prices keep declining when there is a worldwide inflation? A general increase in prices will increase the price of materials to build new homes, which will overall increase house prices. Inflation isn't going to stop anytime soon either. It'll take the Fed at least a year to bring it down to 3 or 4%. Regardless, if we look at the numbers, the median house price has already decreased, and this has a psychological effect. When house prices are rising, people rush to buy homes, afraid that if they don't buy now, they will have to overpay in the future. But the absolutely opposite happens when prices are declining. When people realize that prices are cooling down, they wait until they reach the complete bottom line. The only problem is that no one knows where that bottom line is. That eventually leads to lower demand, which pushes prices to decline further. The Fed is playing with fire here. It's trying to control inflation, but at the same time, not to cause a recession. It's a very dangerous game that can easily backfire with the smallest misstep. The question is, how high should the Fed raise the rates to tackle inflation? According to experts, the Fed should raise the rates to at least 2.5% to bring inflation down to a meaningful rate. Imagine if a 0.25% increase in March already caused such a huge spike in mortgage rates. What kind of spike will an increase by another 2% cause? The last time mortgage rates rose so swiftly was in 1994. Then, in late 1993, rates were less than 7%. By December 1994, they had surged to 9.11%, which was a jump of more than two full percentage points in less than 12 months. Maybe the Fed is trying to play out a similar scenario here. Anyone who understands how the Fed works know that it isn't going to drastically raise rates unless it's a disaster like the 2008 crash where the Fed had to raise rates to cool everything down. To be honest though, it was a mistake since that surge in interest rates created a catastrophe in the market. If the Fed was a bit more careful and slowly raised rates that would bring house prices down over time and the crisis wouldn't have been so bad. So, the Fed would rather let inflation slightly get out of hand than slow down or even freeze the economic machine. That's why many investors believe that inflation could last for another 5 years, maybe not at 8 or 9%, but something around 5 or 6%. There is a lot of evidence to back that claim, which we didn't include here. Like what would happen if China suddenly started a full invasion of Taiwan? The shortages that war is going to create are beyond anyone's imagination. Inflation is going to be so high that even if the Fed raises rates to 10%, it wouldn't make any difference. Let's hope though that that never happens. The main question is, will the market crash by the end of the year? The answer is, Probably no. It's true that the supply of homes is back to pre-pandemic levels and mortgage rates are rising, but that's not enough. There was already a shortage of homes in the market prior to the pandemic, so restoring the supply to the previous level isn't going to make a huge difference. Will prices keep declining? Most probably yes. In fact, it's already happening as we speak. And it might continue to happen until the end of the year. But. Didn't a 20% increase in house prices create a bubble? Well, one out of five dollars in the economy was printed during the pandemic. So you can't really expect to throw that much money into the economy and expect prices to remain the same. Although the housing market does look like it's getting back to pre-pandemic levels, it still might take some time before the housing market gets back to its full potential. Still, I do think it's a great investment to get into once everything clears. Just keep your eyes peeled for any development and you'll be on the way to making a great investment. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching! And if you want to learn a few more tips and tricks to handling your money or your money making skills, make sure to subscribe! We'll see you in the next video. Cheers!